My name is Osman Bakker. I'm a professor in the material science program here at Calst. I lead a lab called the Functional Nanomaterials Lab. And we're interested in understanding and designing nanomaterials and how they assemble and come together to form materials that might be useful for energy applications such as photovoltaics. Arguably, one can trace back the history of nanocluster field to the 1980s when physicists started realizing that clusters possessed magic sizes. They created theories called uh, superatom theories to try to describe the stability of these clusters. Eventually, about 10 years later, chemists started making these clusters not just in the gas phase, in solution phase, using ligands. Uh, ligand protected clusters behaved slightly differently than normal clusters. Most of the work back in, in the 90s was done on gold. Uh, only in the late 2000s did the people start working on silver. Uh, we still don't understand fully uh, how to control the properties of these materials and still there's a lot of steps left for applying them in in applications that, that are related to energy. I started working with nanoparticles as a graduate student at, at Harvard. And in my experiments, I accidentally made one of those clusters. And it was one of the first silver clusters to be made. And, and I was intrigued by uh, their, their properties and by understanding why, what makes them atomically precise and, and what makes them uh, have very special optical properties. Uh, when I moved to KAUST, I moved with the intention of starting a lab that's focused on understanding and designing nanomaterials in general and how they come together and self-assemble to create materials that are useful for energy applications. And uh, nanoclusters, what makes them really special is that they can come together and crystallize into a real molecular crystal, unlike normal nanoparticles. Because of the precise nature of these nanoclusters, we can start thinking about creating artificial materials from the ground up. And that that was one of the aims of my lab, is to study nanoclusters and how they self-assemble, in addition to other nanomaterials that are emerging and are finding use in solar cell applications, such as quantum dots and uh, hybrid uh, perovskite materials. This paper gives our the perspective of the research we've been doing in an area called atomically precise silver nanoclusters. And this is a subclass of nanomaterials, specifically of nanoparticles. For a long time, the properties of these clusters were difficult to tune, and uh, recently, we've discovered new ways of tuning uh, the properties of these clusters and their sizes as well. So my work focus is on silver nanocluster synthesis and its crystallization. For application purpose, silver nanoclusters or any other cluster needs to be processed in organic solvents. Cluster is water soluble, so it's very difficult to process them for application such as photocatalysis, catalysis and photovoltaics. So in view of this, we try to exchange the ligands to transfer them into organics. So in that process, we found many interesting aspects. So for example, silver 35 cluster protected with uh, glutathione ligands, which is water soluble, was transferred into dichloromethane phase, which is organic, using 4-fluorothiophenol. So during this exchange, we saw the cluster core change from 35 to 44. This cluster changes in properties as well as size were characterized using mass spectrometry. You can tune the size from 44 to 35 by adding a glutathione ligand. So this kind of reversibility is not observed so far for any other cluster. Silver 35 to 44 transformation is one step, whereas its reversion involves multiple steps with intermediates such as silver 37 and silver 36. So we used a variety of thiol ligands to obtain different size clusters. We obtained the organic soluble silver clusters ranging from silver 35 to silver 200. So we adopted this ligand exchange methodology to explore the landscape of silver clusters by changing the ligands, ligand structure. Silver clusters can be taken into different solvents via ligand exchange, but the question is, how ligand chooses a particular size. So this question is difficult to answer. However, we have proposed a stability curve that would help us what size of clusters would be probable with these ligands. So as we shown in our perspective article, when we plot the number of free electrons with the core metal atoms, we get a curve with a slope of two third. So that tells for every two free electrons, there is a three atoms of it with some intercept value. So this stability curve could be a tool to guide the scientists to predict what size of clusters can be possible. Now the next challenge is, how could we study so many silver clusters produced in future? So we think the 
organization of these silver clusters or any metal clusters according to their core atom count could solve the problem because as we see in the periodic table of elements the elements are arranged according to their atomic number so we can have also precise number when we arrange our clusters according to their core metal atom count so this way we could conceptualize the organization of the clusters and their subsequent study our main goal was to uh, design silver clusters discover new cluster classes but also understand why are they stable or why they're not how can we take these clusters and use their unique properties that stem from their high stability and their scalability and how can we use them in uh, applications such as uh, photovoltaics and photocatalysis